This week on The Rutledge Perspective, we're continuing to talk about the idea of surrendering to the flow and and putting hustle and grind into context. And with the situation that happened last week at our nation's capital, while it seems completely disconnected, there's actually some learning and some perspective that comes out of that that feels important to share in this particular episode. And I'll start with a story because it's important to understand when we talk about flow and being in flow that we also have to continue to be aware of where we're flowing. And and there's one thing to kind of surrender to the flow and there's another to completely abdicate responsibility for where you're going. This happened to me quite a long time ago and folks that know me really well probably have never heard this story. When I was in third grade, and I'm so dating myself here, but when I was in third grade, we had the election with um, Ford and Carter. And and I have no idea how my parents voted or what the issue was, but I'm, I'm from West Texas. And so I remember going into third grade, Miss Walker's third grade class, and we were talking about the election and we had to raise our hands for who we were going to vote for. And everybody raised their hands, almost everybody raised their hand for President Ford, including me, because it seemed like everybody was voting for President Ford. And I don't know that at the time I really knew the difference or understood or any of that. I don't recall having conversations with my parents about politics at that time in third grade. But, you know, kids hear things. So wherever that came from, for some reason, you know, I was like, we're voting for President Ford. There was one kid, his name was Brian. And I think I remember his last name, but I'm not sure. So I won't call it out here. And Brian voted for President Carter. And I remember being baffled by that. I mean, I can still feel it. I was like, I was confused and concerned. And if you've been listening to me for any length of time, you know, one of my favorite questions is why? Why? I like to understand. I like to explore. Um, I just did a quiz of this kind of marketing, branding, uh, personality kind of thing. And it was like, no, you're, you're someone who really likes to understand the truth and, you know, a soothsayer and advisor and all these kind of things. And so I didn't understand why. And I wanted to understand why. He voted for Carter. And I kept asking questions and asking questions and not understanding and not understanding. And then we had recess. And I remember I'd been asking so many questions and I was like, Brian, I just want to understand. And I remember getting to the playground and having all of these kids behind me as we went to try to find Brian to figure out why he was voting for Carter. And we ran around the playground and we were trying to find him and we finally found him. And I vividly remember being in the corner of the playground with this kid named Brian, I'm looking at him trying to understand why. And I have this crowd of kids behind me. And it was like a mob. It was like this angry mob going after this kid because he had voted for Carter and everybody else had voted for Ford. And in that moment, I remember being afraid and confused and wait, this is not what I wanted. I just wanted to understand why. I just wanted to understand why. And yet my zeal for asking questions and understanding and pushing to get to my knowledge had stirred up something else in all of these people around me that they were willing to almost fight this kid to understand why he was going to vote for Carter. Now, again, third grade, we weren't voting for anybody, not for real, but that's what had happened. And so I give you that story to put in context some of the things that I'm about to say. When we look at what happened and we look at the whole idea of insurrection and sedition and inciting violence, inciting insurrection, which is what happened. It was inciting insurrection. That that's just facts. We've talked about that. There is still truth in this country and there are still facts. We are entitled to our own perspective and our own opinions, but we are not entitled to our own facts. The fact is that this has been brewing for many, 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 many years. This didn't just happen in the last few days. It didn't just happen actually in the last few years, although the rock was turned over, as I heard someone say, the rock was turned over and the seedy underbelly got a chance to come to light. This has been in our country for generations. But what happened and what we need to pay attention to when I think about the Rutledge perspective and we talk about leadership and we talk about how we show up and truth and character and integrity and power, that whole month of power in December is When you are leading people, there is a responsibility 
in that leadership. There is a responsibility for understanding what your words mean actually and how your words can be interpreted because your words are interpreted beyond just the actual words you say, but the tone you use, the inflection you use, the context in which you say the words and your behavior over a period of time that either supports or negates what you're saying in the actual and reads between the lines. And so when we are in leadership positions, it is really important to understand that our words matter. Words always matter. Words are important. Words have power. When you're in leadership and people are looking to you, and especially if people are in pain or they're not getting what they want, or they are, are have a different perspective than yours, and they find someone they can latch onto because they're saying what this, they want to say, this person is giving the message that they want to give, it is important to be aware as leaders of how you are motivating people and what you're motivating them to do. In my post on um, Monday, I talked about how it is, it is really critical when we're talking to people and when we are putting out messages that we look at the, the culture that we're creating and how all of a sudden when we have leaders who have created this environment and now they're saying, oh, that's not what I meant, or this is horrible, but it was okay when you were getting what you wanted. One, nobody's stupid. There are people who choose to be in that same boat with you, but nobody is stupid. People actually see the disconnect and the hypocrisy. People who want to see that, see the disconnect and the hypocrisy. As leaders, your integrity and your character lies in how you stand true to your message. If you only use your message or only stand in power and stand in dissent when it suits you, as opposed to when it's right, that speaks to you and your character. If you stand and you allow behavior that supports your narrative when it's good for you, but when there's a little bit of pain, all of a sudden, all of these people misunderstood you. That says something about you, not about them. Because as leaders, we have a responsibility. We have an accountability for what we say. To whom much is given, much is expected. You know, organizations have these cultures of, really saying we want innovation, we want innovation, we want people to move, we want it to go, but we gotta walk to the bottom line. We gotta make sure we're making money for our customers. We gotta make sure we stay at the top of you know the leaderboard. And if there's anything that comes to light that says that's not going to happen or the direction we wanna go in is maybe the wrong direction and we start to stifle that information, we, we put a roadblock in the highway of transfer of knowledge we are essentially saying, we don't want innovation. We don't want forward movement. What we want is to be right. <laughs> what we want is what we want. And the reality and the facts be damned, because they don't matter. What we want matters. And that's a perspective and that's okay. As long as you understand the consequences of that. Because again, words have power. We don't get to abdicate our responsibility because we are still responsible whether we want to own it or not. And words have power. And while we have choices to make, we can choose how we want to show up in front of people. We can choose how we want to lead our teams. We can choose the words we want. We can choose the narrative we want. What we are not free to do is choose to not be responsible for the outcomes of our actions. We are not free from those outcomes, good and bad. But good leaders stand with what they say. And if they get information, real information and facts, whether that is through behavior, what is th that is through how something is received, real leaders take that additional information and understand if they need to change their messaging, if they need to change their perspective. Right? Sometimes you just need to change the message because the perspective stays the same. It's just the messaging didn't land the right way or it was understood in a way that wasn't intended. And you need to fix that, own it and fix it. But sometimes the information we get later says that the entire thing we were trying to do and where we were trying to move is just wrong. It's just wrong. Or it's not aligned or it's disconnected or additional information comes and says, Ooh, we might not need to go that path. We might need to pivot a little bit. And the strength and character of leadership 
is saying that I get that, I understand that, and as a leader, I know it's not about me, it's about the people that I'm leading, and it's about the goal that we're trying to achieve. And we can talk about goals and the reality of goals and what that really means, because a lot of this, even like I said, this thing that happened to me in third grade was about the goal. The goal for me was I just needed to understand. But the goal is interpreted for everyone else that was behind me was this guy is in on the wrong camp. We got to make sure to change his mind, which was not my intent. But I owned the fact that my words and my actions and my behavior stirred all that stuff up behind me. And in third grade, I had no idea what that is. But that has impacted me along my life around power. That inherent and innate ability to bring people along, to fire people up, to help people understand, to really garner consensus. That's always been something I've been able to do. And with that ability comes a great responsibility. So when we're talking about surrender to flow and staying in flow, and I am still surrendering to flow for 2021 because I like to be in control and I cannot control all the outcomes. I cannot control everything that happens on happens around me. I can only control my actions. And even being surrendering to flow, being in surrender to flow, it is incumbent upon me to understand where that flow is going. Is this flow that I'm moving into a flow towards a goal? Is it a flow towards forward movement? Or am I just flowing and whatever happens and I'm just not paying attention and then I'm just gonna say, well, I'm in flow, I'm surrendering to flow. That's not what surrender to flow means. We are still responsible and accountable. We still need to be aware, we still need to be in action. And let's talk a little bit about surrender and that word surrender. Because I've got a couple of more stories around that and maybe I'll share those on the radio show and maybe put those in a video at another time. But surrendering to flow does not mean surrendering everything that you have. It does not mean standing back and throwing up your hands and saying, okay, I just give up. That is not the kind of surrender we need. Now more than ever, it is important for people to, yes, surrender to the flow, but to stand up, to speak out and to speak the truth. Because it means nothing to have the freedom that we have if we also don't have the freedom to tell people things they don't want to hear. That's what speaking truth to power means. That's what it means to actually say, nope, you know, the emperor has no clothes. And he probably needs to go put some on. That's what that means. It means taking the time to say, that's just not right. And it is incumbent upon me to say that. Maybe I need to say that in private because you don't need to criticize in public, right? I was always taught to criticize in private, praise in public. So you don't always need to make it a big public ordeal to say that's not right, you know, and dissent in public. We can disagree without being disagreeable. And as Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, you know, find a way to lead. You want to lead in a way that people want to follow you. So surrendering doesn't mean giving up on the things that we know are right. Surrendering doesn't mean surrendering to bad behavior and surrendering to the rhetoric that creates this kind of dissent or surrendering to the rhetoric that creates a siege on our capital, on the very heart of our democracy. That's not what surrendering means. That's not what surrendering means in your career. Surrendering doesn't mean allowing yourself to be mistreated. As a leader, surrendering doesn't mean you just go with the flow of a mutiny of the masses. Surrendering means I am listening. I am actively listening. I'm listening to what people are saying. I'm listening to what people are not saying. I am paying attention to behavior. I am looking at where things are disconnected. Surrendering means being aware and understanding and being willing to move or change or pivot or morph or stay the course, whatever is needed in the moment. But surrendering to the fact that there may be additional information there may be additional perspectives. There may be something that changes in the environment that causes a need for me to change or to morph or to stand stronger. But if I fail to surrender to the fact that there are things outside of me that impact me and therefore impact those who I'm trying to lead or those with whom I'm trying to work, then I am not really leading. I'm just moving and I'm managing and there's a difference. So as we go into this week and as we continue to move into this year and surrendering to flow and standing in our power and truly stepping up as leaders that I know we are, 
in understanding that there is great power and there's great responsibility and accountability when you're taking on a leadership position, both for ourselves personally, but also for those we are serving. I encourage you also to surrender to the flow. I encourage you to look critically at the words you've said and how those have impacted others and how those have incited or how those have pushed down others. I encourage you to really seek the truth, the facts, they do still exist. And if after understanding those and seeking those and finding those, you still have a different, a different opinion than what the facts say, that's okay, just own that. Just own that. There are things that come to me all the time that I'm like, okay, I know that's what they said, but oh God, I just don't feel that, I just can't, right? One of those is the vaccine. And I'm not an anti-vaxxer, you guys. I, I truly believe in vaccines. I just need to do some more research. And I know I do, mainly because I'm really afraid of needles. So I need to, that's really my first thing. So let me just admit that publicly. I hate needles. And I keep seeing these people getting shots and it's like 400 miles long for this needle. So um, that's one thing I've got to get over. But the other thing is that there is information. There's never been another point in time where we have had access to as much information as possible. That also requires us to be very discerning and to think critically and to really examine where the information is coming from and what is the motive of the person who's providing the information because that motive can impact how valid, how truthful, how grounded the information is. So continue to surrender to the flow. Just surrender effectively, surrender with an eye towards integrity and character and truth. Surrender with an idea towards flexibility. And make sure that as you move forward and you're leading others, that you are cognizant of how you show up, how you demonstrate your beliefs and your character and how you're lifting others up, how you're moving things forward, how you are standing strong in your opinion and your dissent and understanding how to disagree without being disagreeable. Now more than ever, it is really important for true leaders to stand up and true leaders know that we are not always right. And true leaders have the courage to admit that. And as I had a CEO say a long time ago, if we made a mistake, we will apologize and we will make it right. If we didn't, we'll see in court, right? So the same thing is happening now. If we have made a mistake, let's apologize and let's make it right. Let's speak truth to everyone, not just to power. Let's speak the truth. And let's hold ourselves and others accountable for behavior that is contrary to what the real design of how we want to interact is. And that's the Rutledge perspective for this week. Lots of heavy stuff going on, but really, really strong leaders move through the heavy stuff too, and we bring people along with us. Let me know if there's other stuff you wanna talk about. We're gonna to continue to talk about flow and surrender and all that kind of stuff this month. I thank you so much for tuning in as always, and I will catch you next week. You've been watching The Rutledge Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. If we have given you a different perspective or if you've learned something new that you hadn't thought about before, please subscribe to The Rutledge Perspective podcast where you get your favorite podcasts and give us a like on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher. We really appreciate it. And your feedback is important as well as we use that to inform our next episodes. You can also head over to my website, laurelrutledge.com and download a freebie called Where's My Mojo that can really help you get out of your rut or maybe talk you back off that ledge of frustration. You can also find previous episodes of The Rutledge Perspective on laurelrutledge.com. I really appreciate your tuning in. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.